Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for this week's video. I'm doing another lifestyle experiment for this week. We have a new challenge and it's actually a funny story how I came up with this idea. I follow on Twitter Warren Buffett and he's always posting these motivational, inspiring tweets and one of them was about his most influential habits that he follows. And then a couple days later, I'm scrolling through and I see this fake Warren Buffett's Twitter feed is suddenly sharing the secrets to a fulfilling life. Yep, I got catfished by Warren Buffett. It's some dude pretending to be Warren Buffett, but you know what? It got me curious. What are Warren Buffett's real daily habits? And not just Warren, but some other successful and wealthy people in the world. So I did a bunch of research, hours and hours of research, to find some of the most successful people and what they consider to be their most influential habit to making them a success. So what my plan is to do is every day focus on a new habit. These are all things that are gonna kind of take some time and energy to do. I'll report to you guys how I feel, what habits I wanna keep, which ones I don't like, and just give you my thoughts. If you enjoy these types of lifestyle experiment videos, make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I plan on doing these at least once a month, if not twice a month. This is so genuinely interesting to me. We are going to start day one with Jeff Bezos, who is currently the world's richest person. He is the CEO of Amazon. When I was looking into Jeff Bezos and his habits, there was some very interesting things. One thing is that he insists, despite being the world's wealthiest man, to always do the dishes for his family every night because he says a real man does the dishes. But the habit that we are going to implement actually for this entire week is this one, sleeping eight hours a night. So he says, when I get eight hours of sleep a night, I'm more alert and I think more clearly. It's one of the most important things I do. I'm usually up late working and I average about six hours of sleep a night. So I'm gonna try and focus on getting eight hours of sleep a night. So that will be me going to bed at 10 p.m. and waking up at 6 a.m. All right, so it is day number two. So first to recap from last night, my goal of getting eight hours of sleep was successful and the key for doing this is that I actually had to get into bed at 9 p.m. because you can't just fall asleep right away especially if you're not used to going to bed at that time. I took a spritz under my tongue of a melatonin spray that's kind of a natural hormone that helps you fall asleep. I only do that when I really need to sleep. Now moving on to day number two and I am so excited about this day, probably my favorite day because today we are tackling one of Oprah's habits. Oprah is probably the number one living person that I would most like to meet. I just look up to her in so many different ways. The fact that she's self-made, she has so much integrity, she's done so much to help others. Oprah's most important daily habit that she follows is, I'm dedicated to the power of transcendental meditation for 20 minutes a day. And in case you don't know this about me, I actually grew up practicing Buddhism and on Sundays I would go to a Buddhist meditation group as a kid and I would meditate. We would meditate for 45 minutes and we'd just be looking at a candle and at that age you really don't understand why you're doing it. It feels like torture and I just hated it. So I haven't meditated honestly since then. So transcendental meditation is actually a little bit different. So that is when you follow a mantra and you repeat it over and over, and that is supposed to give you something to focus on. Okay, so we have our meditation set up going on. I'll be real with you, I'm not looking forward to this. Just sitting here for 20 minutes in silence does not sound particularly fun. And I went on YouTube and I looked up transcendental meditation mantras. There's a bunch of different videos. I don't know if I'm supposed to say it out loud or just listen to it. Maybe, maybe we'll just listen. All right, so I have to set a timer for 20 minutes. We have our timer going. Let's do this, 20 minutes. I was supposed to be reciting the mantra or just listening to it. So the first few minutes I was just listening to it 
and my mind was wandering like crazy. When I started reciting the mantra, I was focused on that and I was just focusing on the word and the vibration of the word. And then I started like, my eyes started getting really heavy and I was feeling so relaxed like I wanted to fall asleep. So I'm thinking maybe this is something to do at night to help me fall asleep. So yeah, wow, that was a really interesting experience to say the least. All right, we are back for day number three and I just have to start off by saying it's now my third day in a row of getting eight hours of sleep a night and that alone for me has been like life changing. Who would have thought that getting eight hours of sleep alone, just making that one change would make such a big difference, I mean, Probably anybody would say that because it's kind of obvious. I don't know why I never prioritize sleep, but I just feel more focused, I feel more energized, I just feel better. So today's person is Warren Buffett, the real Warren Buffett. And he is a world famous investor, currently ranked as the third richest person in the world. The habit that we're gonna focus on for today is saying no. No, 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 just no. He says the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. This hit me, this hit me hard because I tend to be a yes person to everybody. I'm a people pleaser. It is one of my best and worst qualities, probably worse. He says it's all about focus and setting boundaries. So Warren actually has an exercise that he recommends doing to help you focus in your life. So the first step is to write down a list of your top 25 goals. 25 seems like a lot. I don't even know if I have 25, but I'm just gonna, just gonna write them down. I have 17 things on my list. I couldn't come up with 25, I have 17. Step two, circle the five most important goals, the ones that truly speak to you. Now, I wish I could show you what's on my list, but these are secret things that I'm working on behind the scenes. Carter sounds like a dying dinosaur right now, screeching, so just try to ignore that. Step three, here's the kicker. Completely eliminate the other 20 goals you have on your list. The point is to say no to everything on that list except for what you have declared in your true heart of hearts are the five most important things. One of the things that I've been struggling with is that I want to start a second channel here, which would be a kid's learning channel. And I'm worried that by doing that, it's going to take time and focus and attention away from this YouTube channel and other things that I'm spending a lot of time on. So I've been debating, but according to this framework, so yeah, according to this framework, that is in my top five, so maybe I should do it and put attention towards that. Okay, so that was definitely an interesting exercise. If nothing else, just sitting down and writing out all of your career goals on paper is something that I have not done in a really long time. Hello everyone, welcome to day four. If I look a little bit different, I got my hair done this morning, so no more roots, which is awesome. But today we are tackling the most important habit of Bill Gates. I'm sure almost all of you watching probably know who Bill Gates is. He is the founder of Microsoft, and for many years he was the world's richest person. He's currently sitting at number two. So his habit was extremely easy to find because he talks about this all the time, and that is reading one hour a day. So he says, every book teaches me something new or helps me see things differently. Reading fuels a sense of curiosity about the world, which I think helped drive me forward in my career. And I love this habit. I think that I need to make more of a concentrated effort to do reading every single day. I typically will listen to books while I'm driving or doing other things, but I don't just sit down and read a book very often. And he is well known for blogging about all of his favorite books. There was a list of his 100 best books that he recommends. And then I found this one. It is called Enlightenment Now. And recently, Bill Gates said that this is his new favorite book of all time. So I thought that was a good one to go with. Basically, it sounds like this is a book that is talking about why the world we are living in today is actually not that bad of a place. This is the best time to be alive and all of the good things that are going on in the world. All right, so I'm here with my reading setup and I downloaded the book on the Kindle app. I know it's not ideal. I would love to have a paper copy, but this is what we're working with. It also will sync with my Audible so I can read and listen to it and switch off in between, which I like. 
So we have a little bit over an hour before Carter wakes up from his nap. So let's get to our reading. Whoa, this is like right off the bat, really deep. A student asked him, why should I live? And he gives a very, very compelling answer. Dang, I'm literally tearing up right now. It's only the second page. All right, so it has now been an hour. My first thing is that I forgot how enjoyable it is to actually sit down and focus on reading a book because now I so often will listen to books. I think you just have a totally different experience and it kind of hits me deeper when I'm reading something than when I'm listening to it. But I do like that I have the option to switch between because I'm invested. Oh my goodness, I feel like this book was meant for me. So I thoroughly enjoyed the experience of actually sitting down to read and this particular book. So today was a win. Welcome to the final day of our experiment. And in case you're keeping track, I am just doing this Monday through Friday. I edit on Saturday and then post this on Sunday. Also, if I did this for a full seven days, this video would be about 45 minutes long. The final person whose habits I will be taking on is Sarah Blakely. I wanted another woman in the mix and she is a self-made billionaire and she is the founder of Spanx. So she's basically an American hero. So we're gonna do two of her habits. They're kind of linked together. The first is this very specific smoothie that she says she makes every single day. It's kind of like her magic elixir. And she reports that she's never had a cup of coffee in her entire life. So this smoothie is what gets her going. And then she takes this smoothie and she drives around aimlessly before work to help get her creativity going. She says she comes up with her best ideas while driving around and she tries to do it every day before work. All right, so here is our smoothie station. We're just gonna get into it. First is frozen wild blueberries, dark cherries, kale, dates, spinach, cilantro and mint, chia seeds, lemon, walnuts, and finally, ice and water. Okay, here she is. I am so curious to try this. Okay. That is not good. Why does it taste like dirt? got like a bite to it. I think I might have put too much kale in there. All right, so now we drive around aimlessly and brainstorm creative ideas. Hey, here we are in the car. Now we drive. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be listening to music. Work, 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 work. Probably not music. I should drive around in silence and just be one with my thoughts. So many thoughts. So many thoughts. Now we have the classical music. Now I can really get to thinking here. You know, I have to say, the smoothie is growing on me. Either that or my taste buds have gone numb. I'm not getting any bursts of inspiration just yet. Give it time, giving it time. I've been driving around now for a solid 15, 20 minutes and I'll be real with you, the only thing on my mind is everything I have to do to finish this video. Do the thumbnail, edit. You know, I can't say that I came up with any brilliant creative ideas, but this is kind of nice, relaxing. So maybe it's a good way to just clear your mind before you start your work day. Because I feel like creativity is one of those things that you shouldn't force. When you try to force creativity is usually what blocks your creativity. And you can quote me on that. So it wasn't what I expected, 
but still a good exercise. All right, so our week has now officially come to a close. So I wanna just to do a quick wrap up and give you my final thoughts. So the habits that I found the least impactful for me was the last day of the smoothie, driving around aimlessly, that didn't quite do much for me. And also the exercise of narrowing down my career goals. And my issue with that is narrowing it down to five goals actually put more on my plate. What I enjoyed the most was prioritizing sleep and trying to get eight hours of sleep at night. That has been really big and now I know I can do that. I feel better rested, I am in a better mood, everybody's happier when I get more sleep. And also the meditation was very intriguing to me because even just that one session, I felt so relaxed. And my final thought on this whole experiment, so these are some of the most successful, wealthiest people in the entire world. But a lot of these habits are somewhat time consuming and it makes me wonder, are these habits that these people did before they became successful when they were on the climb up or after they were already billionaires and they had a lot more time on their hands. Because as amazing as some of these habits were, they are things that I don't think that everybody necessarily has time to do. Or maybe it's just a matter of making the time and prioritizing those certain things, like I am trying to do now with sleep. I had so much fun making this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I know it is a little bit longer than my typical videos, but I am trying to broaden my horizons a little bit here on my channel. And this is just something that I personally find very interesting so I hope you guys like it too and with all of that said thank you as always so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye!